you please welcome and enjoy the comedy that is uniquely our headliner tonight, Mr. Gabe Kia. Gabe. <laughs> One more time for Dennis, everybody. Dennis Piper. And Juicy, too. Keep it going for Juicy. She's found my new opener. <laughs> That's good. She's ste stealing the show. Juicy always steals the show. Here we go. It always happens. No, I'm excited to be here tonight in my uh, this my home club, Go Bananas Comedy Club. It's amazing. I, uh, as Dennis said, I'm not originally from here, so I didn't grow up in Cincinnati. Um, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Very similar city to Cincinnati. I don't know if anybody else is a transplant to here. If you move throughout the Midwest, you can relate to this. It's always the same wherever you go, right? In St. Louis. And Cincinnati, they both, they're baseball towns, they're river towns. The one thing I noticed is that people in Missouri, people always made fun of people from Arkansas, right? They're like, people from Arkansas are backwards, inbred, redneck hillbillies. <laughs> then I moved to Cincinnati and everybody's like, have you heard about Kentucky? <laughs> like, yeah, I just, I think I just figured out the formula, right? You just go to a state, whatever state's below that, that's where the stupid people are. Look how dumb they are. Look how stupid, they're different. I swear, I can touch them, but they're so different than me. I guarantee you talk to anybody from Kentucky and they're just like, Tennessee. <laughs> Have you ever been to Gatlinburg? Yeah. There's some barefoot redneck shit going on in that town. Then people in Tennessee are like, whoa, whoa, Mississippi right there, look at that. We got Mississippi. That's when you talk to someone from Mississippi, they're just pointing at the Gulf of Mexico, right? They're just like, what, fish? <laughs> I ain't dumber than a fish, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Now you know how Canadians feel about all of us. So that is, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what that one's all about. Yeah. A. Throw a little A in there at the end. Yeah. I noticed things have changed over COVID. This is something over COVID. I, w I was still touring. I was still getting out there, going to different states. One thing I did notice is that I like to do, I like to do my shows in states with strict abortion laws. You know why? Because those states also have loose COVID restrictions. Does anybody else <laughs> notice that? They're like, what? You know, they're like, what? No, no abortions here, but yeah, you don't have to wear a mask also. You know. The reason is they got too many uh, new units coming in. They got to move out some of these old units, right? They're like, that's, that's the balance right there. That's why they're all close to the ocean too. They're like, just put your grandma into the ocean. We don't care about life. Uh, Just the concept of life. That's what's important. Dang it. Imagine if though, imagine if COVID was different. Imagine if COVID affected a different group. If it didn't affect the elderly and the weak, you know, the, the people with autoimmune deficiencies and stuff like that. Imagine if, it, if COVID killed baby. Imagine if COVID killed our children, like ages 1 to 21. Oh my gosh, people would be like, what? Not my deductible, you know? <laughs> <laughs> my God, I'll wear two masks, right? How many? Where's the vaccine? Give it to me right now. That's what, yeah. Mess with people's taxes and that's when, that's when things get real. <laughs> Too much, okay, good. I live here in the suburbs in uh, Cincinnati. I just, uh, my daughter just, got, she's back in school. She just got back into school. First day was a few weeks ago. It was very exciting. We have one, we have one child. So it's interesting in my neighborhood to see the difference between us that have like an only child and then the families, they have like three, four kids. They're like, oh my, yeah, the first day of school is a little different for those families. <laughs> Their kids get on the bus and they're, sh they're popping champagne bottles and stuff. <laughs> they're like, hey, who, wa who wants a mimosa, right? That's, <laughs> I'm over here with one kid, like, I'm gonna miss her, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Other people are celebrating. It's, it's different. Yeah, I live in the suburbs here in Cincinnati. I don't know if you've noticed this. They're changing a lot of the football team names, like the Commanders are now the name, and now the Guardians up in Cleveland. But I think we need to revisit some of these street names that we live, right? I live in the, 
I live on Blackhawk Trail of Tears. That's where I live, so. <laughs> it's so weird when I'm giving people directions to my house, I'm like, you take a left on Smallpox Blanket Boulevard, right there. <laughs> and, then, and you go past Custer's Custard. That's a great place to get ice cream with the family. Then there's an oil pipeline expressway. That cuts right through the neighborhood. Yeah, they call it Ronald Reagan now, but uh. Then there's Manifest Destiny Lane. That's a gated community. That's off, uh, it's off to the right. You can't get in there. I think an interesting thing is how the hand sanitizer is getting really potent. Anybody else notice this? How, how you put a little hand sanitizer on and you're like, well, well, I guess I'm not driving for three days. I smell like a fiesta. Smells like straight tequila when you put it on your hands. My wife and I, we're in the front seat, my daughter's in the back seat, and she, we all put a little on our hands, and then my daughter, out of nowhere, she just goes, I love this smell. We looked at each other like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, we're in trouble. Then you know kids, she just kept talking. She's like, makes it feel all tingly. And I'm like, no. She's like, makes me want to take my clothes off. I was like, no. He's like, can someone lick this salt off my neck? I'm like, holy. I turned around and she was 18. I try to be a good dad, good father though. I try to be a good dad. I'm not, I, I also, uh, I smoke marijuana. So I try to be a good dad and smoke marijuana. Get a little woos from the front. That's good. Yeah, I like to smoke weed, but I also don't want to do it in front of my daughter. So what I figured is that this is the, this is the best way for me to smoke Weed when my daughter's home is, uh, daddy's gotta go fill the bird feeders, right? That's what I, I am really into bird watching now. Now I'm out there sometimes four or five times a day, filling up those feeders, make sure they're full to the tippity top. Getting all the seeds and stems out, right? Give them the, give those birds the kind seed, the good stuff. I'm just sitting there behind the feeder like, It's full, it's full, we're good. <laughs> but it's crazy now with marijuana, things are getting so advanced, so sophisticated, even with marijuana, you can't, I don't even need to smoke the flower as the kids are calling it anymore. I can just get a, you just get a vape pen, right? Just go, yeah, I step in the next room, the whole house smells like wedding cake. Boom, there we go. That's right. Two birds, one stone dad. But now, outside, all those birds, they're like pecking on the feet. They, they're like, hey man, what happened? Come on, what is it? First seed was free, what's going on? It's like, that's right, it was a gateway seed. We do have the Ohio, in Ohio, we have the medical marijuana now, so I don't know if anybody has a medical marijuana here in Ohio, yeah? Got three people, that's it, okay, well. I'm pretty proud of it. I, can't, I got my card right here. I keep, it, I keep it with me all the time so I can show everybody. There's my Ohio medical marijuana card. That's right. I show everybody. It's on my belt. That's where I keep it. That's right. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what did I tell you? I'm a suburban dad. We keep our cool shit on our belt. That's what I do. That's me. That's me going to the bus stop. I just show all the neighbors. I'm like, you know what's up? Right there, yeah, she's got it over there. She's showing it off. I'm like, Colton, come to my, you remember Halloween, that was messed up. Yeah, those are 30 milligrams. You gotta be careful, buddy. I'm out there, it looks like I'm starting my, starting my lawnmower. Is that, no, it's, it's actually a weed whacker. That's where I'm starting, I'm starting the weed whacker. Hold on, hold on, we gotta prime it. We gotta prime it. <laughs> That's a manscaping joke. Uh, no, I do like that. Whenever they ask, whenever I go anywhere where they ask you for ID, I love whipping this out because they don't they don't expect it. But you go to like go to the grocery store, you go to the liquor store. They're like, we need ID for that. And I'm like, got it right here. <laughs> the guy's like, well, that that's not what I need at all. And I'm like, but it's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> nerd, you're the nerd. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, got, I was at a Blockbuster video the other day and I was showing everybody in the Blockbuster video. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever taken an edible that's so potent that you time traveled, but that's... That's what happened with me. I thought I was at a Blockbuster video. I was in Middletown, Ohio in a family video. That's how messed up I was. I was just going up and down the aisle showing everybody, I'm from the future, hey. Hey, I'm Marty McKay, yeah. Yeah, I also have my vaccine card right there. Oh, look at that, double, that's, that's right. Vaccinated and vaccinated. That's right. Yeah, this one, this one gets me into the concert. Yeah, and this one gets the concert into me. Right. I like I like whipping out the vaccine card too. Some people, some people either. Some people are expect. No one's expecting it. I don't know. That's all right. Okay. I remember the vaccine selfie. You remember when everybody was doing the selfie online? They were holding it up. They're like, yeah, people are on Tinder. Swipe right. You know. Like, <laughs> Don't have COVID, still have herpes. <laughs> Who knows CPR? Okay. <laughs> Hell no, she says, that's awesome. Yeah, I did my vaccine selfie. I did it online. I just posted on Instagram. You can go check out my Instagram, Abe Lincoln T-shirt. I held it up, my vaccine card, and then I put a Band-Aid on my forehead, and I put the, I said, just got my shot down at Speedway. Highly recommend. <laughs> That's right. I said a gas station, and then I pretended, and people were still like, in your head? <laughs> like, they bought it. They bought the joke. That's what, sometimes you got to explain it. But we were really happy in my family. My mom, we didn't know if my mom was gonna get vaccinated. We were a little scared. She didn't know. If she, then she finally got vaccinated. Everybody in my family, we breathed a sigh of relief. You know, we're like, finally, we can put her in a nursing home. <laughs> you guys know the old saying, like life hands you lemons, you put them in a nursing home. That's what the saying is. <laughs> She's like, Juicy's like, that ain't funny. <laughs> Sound like my mom, Juicy. <laughs> no, I went to get boosted. I went to get my booster, and they tried to upsell me on a flu shot when I went to get my booster. They're like, how about the flu shot? Well, you're here. Yeah. I was like, no, that one's bullshit. Just give me the vaccine. <laughs> the pharmacist didn't know what to say. I was like, give me the one that lets me see Kid Rock. <laughs> Even she was like, oh, you don't need this to see Kid Rock. <laughs> you hear the kids are doing this? They're boofing the vaccine. You guys know about this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Kids are saying they're taking tampons, dip it in the vaccine, and then put it in their... Uh. But they're, you know, no one's gotten COVID from it, so... <laughs> It's good, it's good. Is that the line? Okay, good. We're just finding it. Finding where this crowd goes, they're like, well, no, we don't do boofing, buddy. You're, you're done. It done so. Let's talk a little bit about my car. I got a newer car, it's not brand new, but it's got like a bunch of new features that I'm not used to. There's sensors in the seat. It knows I'm sitting down because it starts beeping. The moment I sit down because of the sensor in this, even in the passenger side, no one's sitting there, it'll still go off. Like I went, went to the gas station, picked up a 12 pack, set my 12 pack down, started beeping like I had to buckle up my beer. <laughs> I, I know, it kept beeping until there were just three beers left. in my 12 pack, I was like, I thought this car had a problem, right? Does anyone else drive a Dodge Enabler? That is, that is my make and model. 
Don't drink and drive if you're driving tonight. Uh, do not make sure to have a, make sure to be, that you're not drinking too much. Don't go over. I got a, I got a DUI when I was in my early 20s, and um, I was not, a, I got it at the worst possible place you can get a DUI. I got one at a sobriety checkpoint. Yeah, I did the worst thing you could do at a sobriety check. I passed out at the sobriety check. Yeah, that's not a good start. I'm sitting there on my steering wheel taking a nap, right? Off. Officer comes up, knocks on my window. I'm like, two drinks, and I'm ready with my, got my story, got my story locked and loaded. That's when, that's when he asked me, he said, sir, do you know why we're talking to here tonight? And I was like, sobriety check, you need me to get out, walk in a straight line, I can do it. And that's when he told me, no, actually, me and my partner had this guy pulled over on the side of the road, and you pulled up behind us. Yeah, that's when I realized I just made my own sobriety check. That, yeah, that, that's a DIY DUI right there. They don't even make you walk the line after they're like, just get in the car, just get in the car. You're good. We got you on video. My, like I was saying, my car's not brand new, but it's, it's new enough that I, some, th some things have gone wrong that I was not expecting. When I was driving from Indianapolis to Cincinnati, and I pressed my fuel, the fuel door to get my, put gas in my car, pressed the button, the fuel door wouldn't pop open. I didn't know what to do. I was like, how am I gonna put gas in my car? I called roadside assistance. It was late at night, they weren't available. I called the dealership, they were closed. I finally got through to someone at Toyota's customer service. And this is what she, she's like, oh, I've heard of this happening before. The fuel door not opening. There's sensors in the dashboard, and sometimes they get a little dust in them. So what you need to do is pull this sensor out and just blow into it a little bit. I was like, are we talking about my 2018 Toyota or early 90s Nintendo game right now? Because the last time I blew into my car, it didn't start at all. So I don't... I don't want to end up back there again. <laughs> but then she said, no, I actually have heard this happening before. It's worked for me, so just try it out. So I, I had no other options. It was the middle of the night. I didn't know what to do. So I took it out. I blew into it like a Nintendo game. I put it back in there. And you know what? My fuel door popped right open. It worked right away. She was right, the lady at Toyota. I couldn't believe it. But now every time I use my blinker, my car goes, -na 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 -na, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Talk a little bit about my daughter. She's uh, she's she's, she's getting older. She she just got a she just got this present for Christmas. I don't know if you remember this game from when you were a kid. It's called Guess Who. Remember Guess Who, right? You flip it up and you got to guess the characteristics of all the people. But she had a new updated version that we that she got for Christmas. It was called Guess Who Me Too, right? Have you have you heard of this game? Yeah. That's where you flip it up and it's got all the sexual predators right there. And then you have to ask the right question to narrow down the field, right? So you got the all, and you're just looking at it and you're like, is your person a politician? And they say no, and you're like, click, 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 click. Is your person an NFL starting quarterback? And they say no, and you're like, click, 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 click. Is your person a Supreme Court justice? And they say no, and you're like, click, click. And then I finally hit one where I got it right. I asked the right question. I said, is your person a journalist? And they said, yes. And I go, oh, click, 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 click. Here we go. Now we're narrowing it down. But then I had to ask an even more specific question to figure out who it was. I said, did your person have a red button in their office that locked the door behind interns? And they said, yes. And I go, click, 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 you're Matt Lauer. Oh my gosh, you're, the Today Show's Matt Lauer. Frequent 30 Rock guest, Matt Lauer. <laughs> My daughter does some cute things that I can't even like recreate. She just says the funniest stuff. One time I dropped some food on the ground and I went to pick it up and she goes, wait dad, five second rule. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> she said, five second rule, that's where you count to five and then you can pick it up and eat it. 
And I didn't correct her. I was like, you're right. That's how we do it. That's the five second rule. And I picked it up and ate it. And I'm like, you can pick your nose too. Don't listen to people. They're wrong. Pick your friend's nose. You can do it all. Don't worry. My daughter likes advertising. She likes the commercials on TV. My wife and I, we don't like them. We always want to flip through them. Like, Hulu, you can't get rid of it. It's, 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 uh, it annoys us, but I didn't know how much she liked commercials until we were making a campfire in the backyard and we crumbled up some paper, some newspaper and I threw it into the fire and she looked at me and she goes, no daddy, not Geico. <laughs> As I was throwing the newspaper into the fire, I realized she just saw a Geico ad and she thought, and I was like, car insurance, really? That's what, that's your thing? And she's like, no, she's just like, scoop, there it is. <laughs> Scoop, there it is. Yeah, she knows the song. I was like, oh, it's the commercials. That's what she, they're getting through to her. The commercials are getting through to her. Sometimes it's in a negative way, too. It's, uh, we, were, we were driving along, and I knew that Taco Bell used to have this commercial where the guy was fighting with Taco Bell. He's like, you don't consume me, I consume you. And then, like, lightning crashes. It was a little scary for kids, I guess. I didn't know that my daughter was scared of it until we drove past a Taco Bell, and she goes, that's where the scary man lives. <laughs> She pointed at Taco Bell and I went, oh yeah, he will haunt your butthole. That is right. <laughs> Be careful with that Taco Bell. She's getting to the age where she's missing, or she's losing her teeth. She's losing all of her baby, missing her teeth. So they're missing, they're gone. No, she's losing her teeth. She lost her second tooth. And when she lost her second tooth, that's when she was clued in that she gets some money. She knew that she was like, oh, I'm gonna get, and that she was getting excited about it. And I had to calm her down and tell her, no, it's just like last time, remember? You put your tooth under the pillow, then the tooth fairy will come at night and uh, take your tooth and leave you some money. She said, but it's my money and I want it now. <laughs> so, I just need to know if anybody, is there a J.G. Wentworth for like tooth fairy? <laughs> tooth fairy money out there that can help me. She really likes Chick-fil-A too. I don't know if anybody else here likes Chick-fil-A. She's really, she loves the Chick-fil-A, oh my God. And you know why I, I like it too? Because Chick-fil-A, they, the, they do the same, their service is always the same whenever you go. They always have the same response after they take your order. You say thank you, and they say, my pleasure, every time. So I realize this, and I know this, when I go to Taco Bell, I'm ready, when, or when I go to Taco Bell, when I go to... Oh. I know this, when I go to Chick-fil-A, I'm ready, I know what they're gonna say. They say thank you, and I say, pleasure me. That's right, then you just sit there and wait. You wait for that innocent little 16-year-old kid. They know what they have to say. They, they can't stop. They say it every time. They're like, my pleasure! Comes out all forced. Yeah, everybody in line at Chick-fil-A is like, oh, I'm doing that next time. Yeah, that was good, that was fun. Those kids at Chick-fil-A are fun to mess with, too, because they are homeschooled as fuck, right? Those kids are, oh my gosh. Some of these kids are fresh out the homeschool. They've never interacted with anybody besides mom slash teacher. Dad slash pastor. Slash doctor. Here's another one you can do at Chick-fil-A. Anytime you go to any Chick-fil-A across the country, just walk into Chick-fil-A and yell out, Noah, come over here. And two kids will come over every time. <laughs> always, in, always in pairs of two. Here's one I like to do at Lowe's, the hardware store. I go to Lowe's, the hardware store, I walk in, I go to the American flag display, and I grab an American flag and a flagpole, and I get the guy working at Lowe's, I go, hey, come over here, help me with it. And I go, is this a good one to beat a Capitol officer with? <laughs> yeah, that's, that sounds like the guy at Lowe's. He was like, what? <laughs> Except for one time at Lowe's, the guy was like, isn't that more of a Home Depot question? <laughs> Like, touche, Lowe's, you're right. <laughs> then I went to Home Depot, that guy's like, oh yeah, this one's got a blue line, that'll make it more ironic, huh? <laughs> Do you wanna see our nail guns? <laughs> no, my favorite is Menards, right? Menards, that's that jingle always sticks in my head, right? It's like, Jews won't replace us at Menards. <laughs> I 
Menards. I like Menards too. <laughs> Being silly. I grew up in a very conservative, very Christian family. We went to church three times a week. We were Southern Baptists. I uh, went to a private high school where we prayed in each class. So I, I come from a very, very Christian upbringing. Some of the things, like I didn't realize when I was a kid, but I see it now. Like when our, when we ha our house that I grew up in had a bar built into it. You know, a lot of houses have a bar built into it. Well, my parents didn't drink, so we just filled our bar with all our toys as kids. So that was like the plate. That was the toy chest. It was the bar. So when I go over to other kids' places, I'd be like, hey, where's your bar? I want to play. <laughs> they were like, oh, I don't know about this kid. <laughs> but some of the things I didn't realize until I was older, and I look back at them, I'm like, that's kind of weird. Like, when I graduated from high school, my mom made me a present for my graduation. She made me a jean quilt. And if you don't know what that is, that is a quilt made up of all my jeans from when I was growing up, and it's just as creepy as it sounds. <laughs> Yeah, I took this away to college. It acted as my chastity blanket in college. <laughs> Turns out you're not getting any action on the jean quilt. <laughs> I'd try. I'd be up in the dorm room hanging out with her. I'd be like, hey, let's move this thing over to the bed. And she'd be like, no, I don't want to hook up with you on your childhood memories. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my mom knew what she was doing with that cock block and jean quilt. <laughs> We weren't even allowed to say fart in our house. That was the F word when I was growing up. We said fart, my mom would say, don't say the F word. Then I grew up and I found out that's not the F word. I'm like, don't tell me the C word's not crap. No, it's not. My mom, my Canadian mother had us call farts poof. She's like, you made a poof, that's what you did. You poofed a little. Just a little poof, right? That's all I heard growing up. I thought it was called poof. So I go to elementary school. I'm hanging out with my friends. Be on the playground. I'd be like, hey, who poofed over here? And they're like, push him down. Take his lunch money. Right? That's what happens. <laughs> Good kid in elementary school. Gets beat up a little bit, turns out. That's actually a very common thing, though. A lot of kids weren't allowed to say fart because they'll have to say toot or pass gas or something in place. But I had some, some people come up, one guy came up to me after the show, he's like, I had to say purr purr instead of fart. I was like, why don't you get away from me, man? That's, what, that's, that's more weird than poof. Yeah. That's what happens when a kitten farts, I think. This one girl came up to me, she's like, I had to say fluff. And I was like, I fluffed a couch before, up top, come on. This one guy came up to me, he's like, I wasn't allowed to say fart. I said, what'd you have to say? He said, rip ass. I was like, well, that is the total opposite of, of my mom, right? I want to meet his dad, though. His dad's rock and roll. He's like, uh-oh, we don't fart in this house. We rip ass. <laughs> now quit being a pussy. <laughs> that kid would go to elementary school, and he would beat the crap out of me. That's right. That's the circle of life of bullying right there. That's how it works out. My daughter's at the age where she's uh, messing up her words. You know when your kids were young and they'd mess up a word, they'd accidentally swear, they'd say a cuss word, and, and you'd be like, oh, that's cute, let's, let's record it. You always wanna get it, you wanna get it, right? That's what, but, and the worse it is, the worse the cuss word, the, the better, the, the funnier it is for us as parents, right? My, my wife and I, we were messing with my daughter and she looked up at her mom and she goes, mommy, you have a fuck hole on your face. <laughs> We looked at each other like, what? And I saw her mom had a piece of glitter on her forehead. She had a sparkle on her face. My daughter was trying to say sparkle, but it came out, fucko. Yeah, I had to correct my daughter. I was like, actually, no, she doesn't. Yeah, she used to. <laughs> You know what happened? You showed up, young lady, and now that, that is a sparkle. That's a piece of glitter. That's a mirage on the horizon. You will never see again. I 
That's not what you want. You don't want to correct him, though. You just want her to say it again. I'm like, you get the fo- you get your camera, I'll get the glitter. I'm like, there's fuck holes all over this cold to sack <laughs> Come on, get it. Get it, girl. I uh, notice this whenever uh, whenever you're at a, at a restaurant. Have you noticed this? You get a you get a straw and they, it's a paper straw instead of a plastic straw, and the the server always says, this, "Sorry, it's for the turtles, right? <laughs> like, Got to save the turtles." And it is. It's not the turtles. It's actually the plastic. You know that. Like we had we had paper straws and they stunk. They melted. So we're like, oh, we we created plastic straws. And then then we had so many plastic straws that we actually have an island in the Pacific Ocean that's like all plastic straws now. <laughs> It's like bachelorette penis straws and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> so now, and the, the reason the turtle comes into play is because the turtle was the paradigm shift. It was, it was a 2015 viral video. This turtle got a straw jammed up in its nose. You know, it was on an all night bender or something. And, <laughs> and, and this vet was pulling the turtle, the, the straw out of the turtle's nose and the turtle made these sad turtle noises. They were like, ah! <laughs> Everybody saw that video, the video went by, everybody saw it and they were like, we gotta stop the straws, we gotta save the turtles. And I remember this same thing happened when I was a kid. It was early 90s and it was the plastic six pack rings. You remember that? And a little sea turtle got into one of the six pack rings and then blew, grew up bigger and it was all deformed. It had that six pack ring around its head and everybody passed that, that picture around and everybody started cutting all the six pack rings. They're like, we gotta save the turtles. We gotta stop the six pack rings. Now I'm thinking, how do we get one of these turtles into a mass shooting, right? That might be, <laughs> might be the only way that we actually fix the problem, right? We get the turtle involved. <laughs> Just some random aquarium field trip and it's like, student, 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 turtle, what? <laughs> We gotta do something. <laughs> I read this story. This was a few years ago. That it was actually someone that survived multiple mass shootings. Someone survived two mass shootings in one year. They were at uh, the Las Vegas outdoor concert. Yeah, you were there too. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Fifty people. Fifty people shot there. And then they were at another. They were at the uh, Bakersfield, California, a country western bar. Nine people shot. Within one year, they survived multiple mass shootings. But if I'm that person, I'm like, you know what? Maybe country music isn't for me. You know. <laughs> Maybe I got to go check out a Lady Gaga concert or something. And not get shot. <laughs> I ended up, uh, I, COVID changed a lot of things. I ended up having, the, this was a, we, we lost someone. We lost a friend from COVID and we weren't able to have their funeral because we couldn't get together. Do you remember when you couldn't get together and you couldn't have funerals, you couldn't have wedding? We lost somebody, we couldn't get together. So a year went by, everybody, everything started to open up and their birthday came along and then we we're gonna have their funeral on their birthday. It was like a celebration of life. We had everybody over for the, for, for the funeral, you know, but. Everybody came up and did a little time, you know, talked about the person for like five minutes. It was really cool. But there were some weird things that were like birthday, but at a funeral. Like we had a birthday cake for this person. I was like, well, that's, that's weird. <laughs> we lit the candles and the wind just blew them out. It was good. <laughs> then we sang happy birthday to a dead person, which I've never done that before. We're all singing happy birthday. To-. We did the whole thing. And then it happened. At the end, someone did it. They were like, and many more. I was like, oh, oh, oh. I spit my drink out. And three people got COVID because of that. <laughs> traveling for stand-up can be hard. I, I, I end up traveling quite a bit. I leave my family and my daughter knows. She knows the moment I put my suitcase on the bed and I start packing it. She's like, knows that I'm going to be gone for a week. But her and her mom do these, like, they, do, they try and do cute little things. When, uh, they'll, they'll put little, little surprises in my suitcase, and then I'll zip it up, and I won't see it. And then I'll see it wherever I go. It'll be a note or something like that, something cute. But sometimes they mess with me. Uh, <laughs> and this happened this one day. I was, I was packing my suitcase, and my daughter went into the bathroom, opened a drawer, pulled out three tampons, and held them up to her mom and said, Mommy, let's put these push pops in Daddy's suitcase. <laughs> she called them push pops. Yeah, and then my, my wife was like, oh yeah, we're putting those push pops 
in your daddy's suitcase. That's a good idea. <laughs> so they put the tampons in my suitcase and I didn't realize until I got to the place where I was, and I was unpacking. And this time I wasn't, usually I stay in a hotel or a comedy condo or something like that when I'm traveling for comedy. This time I was in St. Louis. I was at my mom, I, I stay at my mom's place when I go to St. Louis. So I was at my mom's place and I opened up my suitcase and I see the, ta I'm like, oh God, tampons guys, come on. <laughs> And I saw it and I was like, oh man, why? Of all places at my mom's house. And I, I shoved him down in my suitcase. I was like, no one will find him. That's good. But also, my mom's got a new rambunctious puppy that gets into everything. And this little Springer Spaniel got into my suitcase. He pulled out a few socks and he pulled out one of the tampons, took it downstairs and was chewing it in the living room. And my mom found this at her place and she came into my room like she found my drugs in high school, right? She's like, are you boofing with these? <laughs> I was like, no, mom, those are my push pops. Leave them alone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you all very much. How about a round of applause for your waste staff? They're working hard bringing you drinks. <laughs> it's an important part. Remember, remember to tip them. Tip them, tip them well, tip them extra. That means a lot, that's something we learned over the pandemic too, is like a lot of people aren't making their living from their wage, they're getting tipped by you. So they're not getting paid minimum wage, so they need your tip to make their money. So please remember that. If you're getting carry out, remember that. I tip, I tip people at the McDonald's, you know, the coffee shop. I got pulled over by a police officer. I was like, you're doing good right away. I just want to tell you, 20 bucks. 20 bucks right up top. That's good, that's good. That's good, yeah, that, I don't know. Maybe not try that one, don't try that one. Before I get out of here, I'll tell you this last, this is my, my favorite, my favorite holiday is Halloween. I love Halloween, I love to dress up, I love the trick or treating, I love the kids coming over. A few years ago, this was, this was many years ago actually, it was my niece and my nephew. They came over for my, for my, uh, for Halloween and we we're gonna have a party for all the trick or treaters that came up. We had a haunted house planned. All the trick or treaters that came up to the door, I worked the door, I talked to all the kids. I was like, hey kids, here's the deal. We got a scary haunted house inside. And if you make it all the way to the back door, you get this whole bag of candy. And I hold it up, all the kids are excited. They're like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Then what happens is the kids come into my place and it's like my niece and my nephew, they're in a dog cage in the corner. And my niece just yells out, stop, it's a trap. There's no haunted house. just looks terrified, right? It turns, turns out that's the most effective haunted house that you could possibly have. None of the kids made it past the puddle of urine that was on the floor right there. At my place, and we had a pretty cool party with my niece and my nephew, and hey, that's gonna be it for me, everybody. Thank you all very much. I'll see you later, thank you. Mr. Gabe Keel, please. Hey, Kia.